Hello and welcome to another deck take. So whilst Aether Vault has created some new decks, some exciting combos, it's also brought cards which breathes life back into a deck which has been around for a while but been kind of sidelined recently in Standard and hopefully we'll be back with a vengeance. So today I'm here to talk about Green White Tokens. Green White Tokens was originally built around Nissa Voice of Zendikar and Gideon Ally of Zendikar. These are two powerful planeswalkers who can both produce tokens and pump them. So these really reward you for going wide. Green White Tokens also gets to run Oath of Nyssa, which for one green mana allows you to basically select a card and fixes your mana for casting your Planeswalkers. It's a very valuable, very efficient card. And one of the new cards from Aether Revolt, which this deck plays three of, is Oath of Ajani. Oath of Ajani is another card which really rewards you for going wide and also helps you to cast your Nyssa and your Gideons by making them cheaper. It's a very valuable and very effective card for two mana, and it's really quite strong in this deck. So what creatures do we play to enhance our go-wide strategy? Now, I'm a big fan of Hanway Militia Captain, and therefore I would play four in this deck. Hanway Militia Captain is effectively a Grizzly Bear. It's a 2-2 two, two for two, but if you control four or more creatures, it flips to an XX, where X is the number of creatures you have, that produces a token every turn. It's therefore obviously a very powerful effect when you can stack counters on all your creatures, and that's why I would play four. We also play three copies of Selfless Spirit. Selfless Spirit is a must-have in strategies aiming to go wide because it protects you against board sweepers. It's also a, a two-strength flyer that, when you stack tokens on it, can swing games pretty quickly, so also has some aggressive um, ability, but... Like I said, it's really good against board sweepers. We also play four copies of Lamholt Pacifist. So it turns out a pacifist with a bit of power becomes a big, mean, angry werewolf that wants to rip limp on limb. But Lamholt Pacifist on turn two, Nissa on turn three, put a counter on your pacifist. You're attacking with a uh, four power creature on turn three. It's a very strong start. It also has other abilities, which we'll get to um, when we talk about later cards. But three power is very relevant on a two drop. And another... New card from Aether Revolt, which plays Sram's Expertise. So the Expertise cards are all great. They're great value. You get to cast another card um, while playing your Expertise card. And Sram's Expertise gives us three servo tokens, so three more bodies to stack counters on, and allows us to play a three drop. So we could potentially go, you know, turn four Sram's Expertise, playing Sram's Expertise and Nissa Voice of Zendikar, and all of a sudden, we've got seven mana out on turn four. We've got three servo tokens, which we're probably going to put a counter on. So, you know, we've got three two twos for four mana and a planeswalker. It's just an all around great deal. It's a very powerful card, Sram's Expertise. The deck is it's placed somewhere between an aggro and a mid range deck. So, we also play three copies of Tyler's Tracker as just a good mid range grindy card. Allows you to draw cards, it naturally stacks counters on itself. And I think most green decks would play it. We're probably playing it over Thraven Inspector here, um, taking the slightly less aggro route. But I think that's fine, particularly given the next card. The next card, we play two Heart of Kirin. So originally this slot was going to be Smuggler's Copter. But given the recent Smuggler's Copter ban, and the fact that Heart of Kirin works so well when you have Planeswalkers, we decided it's a fine like-for-like -like swap. It's also one of the reasons why we play cards like Lamholt Pacifist, which can naturally drive the Skyship. Because, you know, you can then attack with a 4-4 Vigilant Flyer on turn 3, uh, which again, very strong start. Um, you can stack counters on it, so it's quite a good, aggressive creature stroke vehicle. And for our removal, we have 4 Stasis Snare. Stasis now is probably the best white removal right now, just because it's both instant speed and can target any creature, including those with Indestructible. It's particularly going to be useful against the Copycat combo, which I am expecting to see a fair amount of, particularly at the start of a standard season, and it can, it can break that up before it begins, which is quite nice. And onto the mana base. It's a two-colour deck with fairly simple mana requirements, so the mana base is fairly straightforward. We play play sets of Canopy Vista and Fortified Village as dual lands. 
we play six forests and five plains. And because we're a tokens deck, we get to abuse Westvale Abbey to its full potential. This card has no doubt improved in value since the banning of Reflector Mage. So it's a very powerful card to have and therefore we play a playset. On to the sideboard. This is a deck where the sideboard will change quite dramatically based on the meta you're facing. So bear that in mind. Just as a illustrative sideboard, here's some ideas. Cards I'd consider playing are Gisela the Broken Blade, uh, Brune the Fading Light, and Archangel Avacyn. Archangel Avacyn was a main deck consideration, and it was originally played in the main deck of Green White Tokens. But I think there's some more powerful cards. Um, particularly in game one, we can try to be a bit more aggressive as well, so not playing a 5 drop is fine. And Gisela's going to be good in aggro matchups, having lifelink. And Bruna in grindier matchups gives you an alternate win condition of you know, either you've got a 5-7 flyer or if you're really lucky you can get Brisella. So for you, each of these, each of our trio of angels has particular uses which are great in individual matchups. We have access to Another angel on our sideboard, Sigarda Heron's Grace. Another grindy token producer that can be invaluable by giving you hexproof in certain matchups. So, particularly useful in matchups where your opponent's looking to burn you out, or maybe Dynavolt Tower matchups. We're talking like blue red spells decks. We also have some copies of Ajani Unyielding, a versatile planeswalker that can generate card advantage and be a removal spell. Again, it works really well with Oath of Ajani by reducing its cost 5, which I think makes it much more appealing. And we also would play some copies of Lantern Scout for against aggro decks. Giving your whole team lifelink can generate a good amount of life to keep to uh, stave off the imminent threat of an aggressive deck. And obviously it combines well with Gideon, who produces knight allies who will regularly trigger Rally on the Lantern Scout. The sideboard would also contain some more targeted removal. Some form of artifact and enchantment hate is advisable, given there will still be vehicles in the format. I'd pluck for Fragmentize as the most efficient removal. There's not many vehicles or artifacts with a conversion mana cost 4 or more that you really want to kill. Um, if there is, you could always use uh, Appetite for the Unnatural. I'd also play some extra creature removal. I've gone for Declaration in Stone. Declaration is good against other token strategies, though, and Exiling is still relevant in the format, given there will be decks playing cards like Prized Amalgam and Scrap Heap Scrounger. And in this kind of deck, I'd always play a copy of Collective Effort. Modal spells are always useful, and Collective Effort has at least two modes which will be useful in pretty much any matchup. Destroying target creature with power 4 or greater, or putting a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each of your creatures, are both useful effects, and it makes it quite a valuable card to have access to. So that's the deck tech. Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you do like it, then please give the video a thumbs up. Your support means a lot. Also remember to hit that subscribe button for our channel. And we're trying to grow, we're trying to get out there. Be really thankful if you could help us do that. If you want to follow us on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, you can as well. We're all under cheap SMTG on those, so remember to follow us on there. And if you do play the deck, then let us know how you get on with it. We will be uploading Aether of all limited videos when that hits Magic Online, so keep an eye out for those. Hopefully you'll join us in the future, and thanks for watching the deck tech.